Now let's talk about expected points added. Expected points added is a way of measuring the impact of a play, and it's a big improvement over how we've traditionally measured uh, play outcomes. Uh, traditionally, we've measured play outcomes in terms of downs. So let's take an example. Let's say it's, it's third and three, and the offense gains four yards. Now that's a pretty good thing. We're, we're pretty happy with that. There's a conversion there, and the drive goes on. Now let's say it's third and eight, same spot on the field anywhere, and we gain those same four yards. Now is that good? No, probably not. No, that means we're likely going to have to punt or try a field goal. So the yards was the same, but the play outcomes were vastly different. So we need a better way of assessing the impact of play outcomes and expected points added does just that. Now the definition of expected points added or EPA for short is the expected point value at the beginning, I'm sorry, at the end of a play, the result of a play. The difference between that and the expected point value at the snap. So, uh, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at an example. Let's say that it's first and 10 at midfield. And this is our familiar expected point curve for first downs. Recall that this is the this represents the field. This is the end zone where we're trying to score. This is midfield. The offense is moving this direction. This is the end zone we're defending. So the closer we get to scoring, the more expected points we have. Um, it's uh, at the most, right up against uh, the goal line there, we're just under seven points, and it decreases as we move back through the field. So the first and 10 at the 50 would be right here, and that's worth about two um, expected points. And let's say that uh, we um, had a 15 yard gain on the play. And that sets up a first and 10 at the 35, our opponent's 35. And that might be worth about 3.1 expected points. Now, the EPA on that play would be the value at the end of the play here, 3.1 minus the value at the snap, which was 2.0, and therefore we get 1.1 expected points added. So as a result of that play, the offense can expect a 1.1 net uh, point difference improvement in the final score of the game. So that's how we can assess the value of a play. Now we can attribute that to the participants of the play as well. So if that was a pass, catch, we can get, we can give those points, assess them, or assign those to the wide receiver, to the quarterback, uh, to the offensive line. If this was a running play, uh, to the to the running back and the other participants. So this is a good universal currency for comparing all different kinds of things in football. So uh, penalties, um, gains, losses, turnovers, and so. That's what we'll talk about in the next example, is uh, how to value a turnover. So let's take the same situation as before. Uh, first and 10 at midfield. And that was uh, here on the curve. And instead of a 15-yard uh, gain, we had a 15-yard uh, turnover. So. Uh, the ball still gets to the uh, opponent's 35, but now he has the ball, which results in a first and 10 for him at his own 35. Now, previous, previously, we said this was worth 2.0 expected points. This would be now he's on this side of his own curve on his own 35, so this might be worth uh, 1.0 expected points for him, but because... He has the ball now. We well, take the inverse of that. It's negative um, for for the team that used to have the ball.
So now the EPA on that play is going to be expected point value at the result minus the, ex the expected point value at the snap, and we get a loss of three expected points added. Now that is a good way to measure the impact of, of a particular turnover. Now let's, uh, let's look at a more complicated example. Up till now, we've always talked about first downs. So going from a first down state to another first down state, whether that's our own first down or a uh, turnover, which resulted in a first down. And uh, that's good for illustration purposes, but most plays don't result in first downs. Uh, they result in second downs, third downs, fourth downs. Now things get a little more complicated because we no longer uh, um, are restricted to just uh, say 10 yards to go or a goal to go. We need to worry about all the different um, uh, to-go distances, possible to-go distances. So uh, this is what the chart ends up lo lo looking like. Uh, we've got um, uh, one color for each to-go distance, and I just selected a few. The yellow is for five, the green is for six yards to go, and so on. And you can see the point values decrease the longer the to-go distance is, as, as we would expect. And we can generate uh, these numbers, uh, find out what those values should be uh, using the same uh, methods that we did um, for first downs. So what we did was we added up uh, the weighted average of all the outcomes of, um, of uh, uh, those situations. So in this case, let's, let's look at uh, five, second and five. So for all the second and fives, say, at, uh, from midfield, uh, sometimes we get a touchdown, um, sometimes we get uh, field goals, sometimes uh, our opponent somehow gets the ball either through a punt or a turnover, and he's the one that, uh, scores next, um, but more often uh, we we're going to be the ones to score. We've got we've got the ball. We're at midfield, so you take the the weighted average of all those uh, outcomes, and uh, you get um, something close. It's going to be close to the first down value because uh, it's uh, five yards to go. So it might be say uh, 2.0 expected points there, and um, and that's how you uh, build these curves. Uh, but to apply them, let's let's take another situation. Let's say uh, we started again. It was first and ten at midfield, and that was worth 2.0 expected points. And we gained uh, we gained five yards on a play. And now that sets up a a second and five from the plus 45 and we would go to our chart and we would look at what that value is and that might be 2.1 expected points and now so the expected points added for that play is the value of the result minus the value at the snap and we get a positive 0.1 points so uh, not a not a huge play, obviously five yard gain. That's something we would expect, um, but it is uh, it is positive, uh, so it would be considered a success. Um, now let's let's look at uh, the the opposite result. So we'll come to this example. will illustrate why yards can be such a bad um, uh, valuation. So uh, you know when a running back has a you know, 100 yard gain, or 100 yard game. Uh, you know, he's got some gains for 10 yards, for five yards, for three yards. He's got a few losses thrown in there too. Um, but those losses and those gains count equally uh, when you total up all his uh, all his yardage. So again, let's say it was uh, first and 10 at midfield. Uh, instead of a five yard gain, we've got a five yard loss. Okay. Uh, instead of a second and five, it's now a second and 15 at their own 45-yard line. And that is worth about uh, 1.2 expected points. So the EPA for this play is going to be the value of 
value, the expected point value at the result minus the expected point value at the start of the play, and that's going to be negative 0.8 expected points added. So although traditionally we would consider these symmetrical, um, five yard gain and the five yard loss, uh, realistically the five yard loss is eight times as um, important and has eight times the effect on the score that the uh, five yard gain would have. So obviously this is telling a very different story than traditional yardage and this is just one application, one way to look at this. Uh, there are many more applications of expected points added. And we'll talk about that, uh, one of those applications, in the next video.